My name is Arthur Quarles, and I'm part of the Gardner side of the family. Uh, my mother' uh, name was uh, Queen Esther Gardner Quarles. Well, my grandparents, uh, Peter and Ma Gardner, uh, of course, they were born both born in Georgia. Um, the first that I've heard of uh, Ma was that she actually lived with her uncle. Her father apparently um, disappeared after something had happened in, I believe, Hillsboro uh, or Lansby, Georgia, and which is uh, not far, not too far outside of Atlanta. And uh, the mob came at him. And you know, a lot of times you hear about a lot of mobs. Back in, in those days, there was a lot of things going on. Of course, uh, the men weren't able to really defend their families. Uh, they were uh, degraded. Uh, they were put to shame. They were talked about, called all kind of different things. And, and there were some men that, that stood up. And, uh, and a lot of times they ended up uh, hanged or run out of town. Uh, in Ma Gardner's uh, case, her father, uh, but he kissed, I, I remember uh, Cindy was telling us that uh, she, Ma told her that uh, her father kissed her and they heard a mob outside. He jumped through the window and uh, uh, opened the window and jumped out of the window and, and she never saw him ever again. And she was raised by her uncle, his name was Richard Starks, and uh, apparently uh, Maul eventually met uh, Peter in Hillsbury, Hillsboro, and uh, later they they got married. Uh, while they were in Georgia, I, I do know that uh, Uncle Buck, but, uh, I do remember he was the only one that was born, of that family that was born in Georgia. Of course, they were here in uh, 1923. So uh, the rest of the family, uh, Leroy, Leroy was the second oldest, Buck was the oldest, Leroy second oldest. Uh, and then uh, there was, uh, I believe, my mother, uh, Queen, uh, Uncle Shine, and then there was uh, Lily, Lily Gardner, uh, Jones, uh, then Cindy and James Gardner. And actually, uh, Maud and Peter, they lived uh, on Jericho Road in uh, Palestine. I, I believe they raised their most of their family uh, on Jericho Road, and, uh, and that's outside of Goodwin. Of course, they first lived in Goodwin and they moved uh, Peter and uh, Maul purchased land in Palestine uh, on Jericho Road, and uh, I believe they eventually got at least 50, somewhere between 50 and 100 acres, and uh, some of the land is still, uh, of course, there now. I kind of go back just a little bit, uh, Peter, who, who Peter Gardner is, Peter Gardner, is uh, the son of Cain and Kizzy Whiting Gardner. And uh, of course, uh, Cain, his father, was Dan. Uh, and Dan Gardner was uh, actually born um, in, in Virginia in, in 1820. Cain uh, was actually born in, in Georgia. He was born in Georgia. His, uh, in Georgia. His uh, wife, Kizzy, was actually born in, in Georgia. Um, there's a, uh, a, a story that was told to me by several people uh, about uh, Peter, how Peter and the family came to Goodwin, Arkansas. Uh, matter of fact, uh, there were several, uh, probably about five or 10 years ago, I went by Cousin Fox, 
went by his house and, uh, and I wanted to know a little bit of, of the history of, of how they got here. And uh, I found out that uh, there was an incident that occurred uh, uh, between the gardeners and uh, a white employer. As a matter of fact, a white employer uh, physically abused one of uh, Peter Gardner's and, and, and some of their family members, uh, a, female, a female member of the family. And that female member of the family came home crying, uh, abused, ashamed, and one of the family members, uh, the name was never actually given. One of the family members was really upset and he decided he was going to take action. And so what he did, he went, he found the uh, white person, the white employer. Uh, they fought, uh, uh, the family member ended up killing the, the white employer. Uh, the family had to come up with some idea of how to uh, get the family member out of Georgia. And uh, they just put their heads together, Peter, uh, Kane and, and, and uh, I'm sure it was probably some of the McKissick Smiths Whitings. They put their heads uh, together to, to figure out how to uh, get this family member out of, of uh, Georgia. So what they did, uh, they came up with the idea of actually putting him in a casket, uh, getting him on a train. Peter uh, uh, purchased a casket, put it on a train, uh, put uh, the family member inside the cas casket. Uh, the train took them as, as far as the money until the money ran out. And, uh, and it just so happens to be in Goodwin, Arkansas. And when they got to Goodwin, of course, uh, they later sent for the family, other family members. And, uh, and I believe it was probably around uh, about 18, excuse me, 1923, that they actually arrived in uh, Google with the family. Well, there were a number of family members that I talked to about that uh, situation. Uh, Leo was one of the first uh, people that I heard uh, or even told me anything about this situation. And, uh, and he didn't know exactly who it was. Uh, ain't my Aunt Cindy, Cindy Garvin, uh, Cindy uh, Gardner Wilbur. Uh, she even talked about it at, uh, at one point and she didn't know the name. And, uh, and, and after talking to uh, Cousin Fox, uh, better known as Cousin Fox, uh, his, and his name is Benny, actually Benny uh, McKissick. We, he didn't actually know. And actually he, the one that, he was the one that told me that uh, they never really disclosed the name because they wanted to really hide uh, the name of the person. So they never really uh, talked about the name uh, as much because they really at that time didn't want to put his name out there. And uh, uh, of course, they were looking for him in Georgia. So they kind of kept that kind of hush hush. So, and now we really don't know who that was. Eventually, they actually uh, send for their family and, uh, and eventually the Smiths, uh, and of course the McKissicks, the McKissicks actually came with uh, uh, my, uh, my great-grandmother, uh, Kizzy and uh, Kane Gardner. They actually uh, brought them with them. And, uh, and I remember uh, Cousin Fox was, he would always tell me about Peter Gardner and how a role model that he was for him, and that uh, uh, he was like a father figure, a figure to, to him. And uh, that he really uh, appreciated all that he had done. He taught him uh, a whole lot. So uh, that meant a lot to me, hearing that come, coming from uh, Cousin Fox. But the McKissick family, they did come from uh, uh, Georgia with uh, uh, the gardeners. At that time, apparently, uh, Lila was actually uh, apparently sick. 
she was sick over a, a long period of time. And uh, from documents that I, uh, I saw and from uh, and conversations that I've had with other people, um, I believe it was about uh, 19 and 1910 census, excuse me, 1920 census, you'll find uh, most of the McKissicks and uh, the younger gardeners were living together at that at that time. Of course, uh, Lila, she was Lila McKissick Gardner, was actually, uh, I believe, about the third or the fourth oldest of uh, of, of uh, the kids of uh, my great grandparents, and uh, she was one of the uh, actually what she ended up doing was um, in, in, in the 1920, 1910 census, um, I saw some documents with her and her husband Hardy. Hardy McKissick was actually her uh, husband. I saw some documentation of them with their children and uh, all the children except for, uh, I believe it was Lula and Benny. They weren't uh, born. Uh, of course, Benny was born in 1918. And I believe Lula was born in 1916. Uh, in 1910, the documentation, uh, it had most of uh, Lily or Lila uh, and uh, Hardy's children. And uh, but in 1920, I couldn't find anything with Hardy. I don't know exactly what happened uh, to Hardy at that time, whether uh, he left the family or he passed, passed on. But uh, from the documentation uh, in 1920, uh, Lila actually moved in with her, uh, her pa parents. Uh, Kane, my great grandparents, Kane and uh, Kizzy. Like I said before, uh, in 1910, Hardy wasn't uh, listed as uh, a family member in the household as far as the uh, 1910 census is concerned. And uh, But now in the 1900 census, it uh, stated uh, Hardy and uh, Lila. I keep saying Lily, but it's uh, Lila. Um, and uh, Lila was actually born in uh, 1876, and Hardy was uh, born in 1875. Uh, they were actually married in 1895. They were married in 1895. And uh, uh, in the 1900 census, uh, Mary, and there was a Hardy Jr. Um, you know, somebody may recognize that, that name, but it was Mary and Hardy Jr. They were the only two uh, during that time. But now in the 1910 census, uh, when uh, Hardy wasn't in the census, the 1910 census, uh, I saw the name Jane, uh, Sam, Henry, Maddie, Frank, and Peter. And of course, uh, like I said before, uh, Lula and Benny wasn't born uh, during that time. They were uh, actually they were they were born in in, uh, in Georgia, and uh, the city was called Whites. They lived in uh, uh, a city called Whites. Uh, that's in Jones County, Jones County, Georgia, and uh, this was in the 1910 census. Now, also back in the 1900 census, I found um, uh, Hardy's mother actually lived with, with them. She was uh, 69 years old at the time. That was in, uh, in the 1900 census. And uh, apparently uh, Will, uh, Hardy's father, uh, in which he was born uh, in 1820, uh, apparently was deceased uh, during that time. Uh, Will's father and mother uh, were actually born in uh, Georgia. They both were born in Georgia. Will was born, I don't know how that 
happen, happened, but of course, more than likely, Will was a, a slave at the time. He was born in Virginia, uh, but his parents were actually born in Georgia. Uh, apparently, they could have been sold. Uh, then again, they could, they could have been free, but uh, I, I kind of figured they probably were sold, uh, and uh, they had Will in Virginia, and, uh, and then they made their way back. Will made his way back to, to Georgia, apparently, where he met Jane, and of course they had Hardy, and Hardy met uh, uh, Lila, and uh, and of course they they got married, and there you have the, the kisses. We can't talk about the gardeners, uh, and the kisses, without talking about the whites. And uh, actually, uh, when I look at any documentation, uh, the oldest known ancestors of, of mine would all it would go all the way back to Henry uh, Whiting, in which he was born in 1805, and uh, his wife, uh, Lavinia, I'm not terrible with names, but uh, uh, Lavinia is how I pronounce it, uh, I believe she was born about 1815 uh, in Georgia. Now, Henry was born in Virginia. Both were born slaves. And uh, they apparently met in Georgia. And uh, they had uh, children. Uh, Warren Whiting, uh, one, of, one of the oldest of, uh, of Henry uh, Whiting's uh, sons, uh, I found a census 1870 census on him and uh, his wife Delilah and uh, I found that uh, Delilah, well Hip Warren was actually born in 1825 Delilah uh, Delilah was born in uh, 1820 of, of course she was uh, a little bit older than, than Warren uh, Delilah would apparently had a, a white father Census it states that she was uh, mulatto or mulatto, uh, is pronounced. And in the census, 1870 census, it's hard to find any information if uh, if the person wasn't living in 1870, you, you're not going to find in 1860 census, you will not find uh, information of uh, too many black families, especially our families, because uh, during that time, 1860, there was slavery. And, uh, and the only way that we actually found Henry and, and uh, uh, Lavinia was because they were in the 1870 census. And, uh, and it gives you their information. And also 1870, Warren and Delilah. Warren and Delilah uh, had uh, a bunch of children. And a matter of fact, Scott uh, Whiting and Kizzy Whiting, uh, uh, Warren and Delilah are their, uh, their parents. And in the census, apparently, um, Kizzy Whiting is already married to Cain. And uh, uh, and I noticed Scott. So apparently, uh, uh, Kizzy at this time was probably about 18, uh, 17 or 18 years old, something like that. And she was married uh, to Cain Gardner at about this time. I, I noticed that Scott was still at home uh, in, in the 1870 census with Warren and, and Delilah. He was 18 years old. And uh, the next in line was, uh, was Sarah. There were several others that were younger. But Scott is uh, apparently the father of uh, Fanny uh, Whiting Smith. And that's where the Smiths come in. Uh, Fanny eventually married Ransom uh, Smith, and uh, um, and I, I thought it was you know really interesting that uh, uh, you know all of this come together right there with the uh, with the Whitings. All of our lineage goes straight to uh, to the Whitings. My name is Willa Smith Bias. I am the daughter of Jesse and Mattis 
there. My grandparents, Ransom and Fanny Smith. Well, Grandpa Ransom and, Grandpa and Grandma Fanny had six children. The first one, the oldest one is J Josephine, then Jesse, our friend, Lee, Mamie, and Sam. My father came to Arkansas with Kesey Gardner and her family. And he worked and he sent back after his mom and his siblings. And they stayed here for a while. My dad, which is Jesse, he sent back and got his dad because Uncle Lee was getting out of hand. He sent and got for granddaddy. Also, Granddaddy was not here. <laughs> and there was another man getting interested in my fanny. So, and that's all. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> that's why all of this happened because of uh, certain conditions. So, he said and got for his, his daddy. So, his daddy came out here. Mary is related to the Smith by blood. Mary is granddaddy, ransom. Smith, brother's child. She was raised by Scott James. Is his name Scott James? Scott, his name, first name was Scott. And and his wife. And after she was grown, she married a man from Wheatley. The Applewhite. His name was Richard Applewhite. Mary married him. And to this union was born several children. It was one of a, I believe it was A. May Liza was a midwife. And uh, they gave, the woman gave Mary to this midwife. And she raised her. <laughs> but it was all in the garden. It was one of those gardener girls that raised Mary. And she married an apple white. Big baby. That's it. Big baby. I couldn't think of the woman's name yet. That's who raised Mary. But, I mean, this is information that needs to be passed on down from family, on down through the generation of the family. Because this is what was passed down to me from my mom and my dad telling the story of the history of our family. How they came to Georgia, from Georgia to Arkansas to live a better life. I'm Dolly I'm Dolly Smith Armstrong. I'm Ransom's Smith daughter. Ransom Smith Jr. is the son of a family. And uh, Ransom Senior. I'm on the Fanny Whiting side. I uh, got involved in the family uh, history because it's uh, something I think uh, we need to pass on down to the rest of our family. My grandma Fanny and grandfather Ransom. I had six children, uh, four boys, and two girls. Grandma Fanny. Grandma Fanny, she was an educator. And I suppose that's the reason we got so many teachers. And Grandpa was a, he was an ed educator too. This this was in the 60s, I believe, the one. But the old church across the river could have burned too. Uh, on Grandma. On the farm we lived, that's where the church was on the farm. New my design was on uh, Elka Cruz farm. Uh, when the church split, a grand, great, great aunt, here's a gardener, started the church. Uh, she was a Christian woman from Georgia. Now when the church split, it was because they didn't want a woman to be a pa to be the pastor, be the leader of the church. So she 
um, just let them go. And she stood faithful to the church regardless. But the Baptists, they already had a preacher. They was on the leadership of a man. And they continued to uh, have that fellowship. When uh, the uh, Baptists got across the river track, shortly after that, they needed a greater church, not just a little old city building. So they got a big building, and they built it on Highway City. That building burned, and uh, they had to erect another building. Back in the 60s, there was a great uproar about the blacks and the white. And so, we really don't know how it started out to, uh, they wanted to burn the black church. But they really said we're burned by one of our, our own colors, which we believe they were put up, you know, they put him up to do. And after they burned, it was, it was only for a short while they, they built a new building. Now, the Church of God in Christ here in Hitman, we had to, uh, we bought an old building and put it here. Uh, part of the family went to it, went to this building that was purchased by um, the members. Uh, in uh, 1971, we put up the new Church of God in Christ. But our family still fellowship with the New My Zion members. We still had, you know, a 10 church there. And I was with the family. It was still the Smith Gardeners and McKissick. And we still had Smith McKissicks in the Church of God in Christ. Now, my mother, mother Kissy was the founder of the church back in years past. Years, years, I suppose in 18, 1800. Their first coming to Arkansas was 1923. That's when she came and she brought to church with her. Her children, there was a large family. She raised her grandchildren. She raised her children, grandchildren, great grandchildren. My good one had got a family cemetery. Our, our great aunt Kissy, when she come to Arkansas, her husband was the first to be buried in the Good Memorial Cemetery. And, we, and I tried to find how old this cemetery was. There was an 18, somebody died in 1830, 1830. No, they might have been born in 1830 because it didn't say what year they died. And I'm I'm yet doing research on it, on the Good Memorial Cemetery. And after that, you know, we continue to bury family members. Today, I'm glad we got the cemetery. I thank you for interviewing me. And uh, I hope this will help. And uh, we want to pass this on to the next generation. We don't want to stop here. Uh, I tried a long time ago to write everything down, but it, somebody got lost. And uh, next time she interviewed me, you know what? I'm going to do that. My name is Irvin Smith Sr. I'm the son of Samuel Smith Sr. and Evelyn Smith. I am the fourth child of 12. I am a descendant of uh, Ransom Smith Sr. and Fanny Whiting Smith. Uh, I'm one of the grandsons of, of Ransom Smith and Fanny Smith. The parents that, that raised us did not let us know or believe that we were poor growing, growing up. Uh, we had 
had all the necessities that we needed. Uh, we had uh, food, we didn't go hungry. Uh, we worked hard. That was one thing that uh, I still value and I try to pass on to my children and grandchildren, that a good hard work ethic. Uh, that, that gets you a long way in life. We uh, raised rice, soybeans, cotton, corn on the farm, the four animals. Back in that day, we ate good because we ate healthy. We ate directly from the farm, mostly, mostly. Uh, early, uh, later on, my dad went and started uh, getting commodities, uh, which also uh, helped, helped us out with, with food as well. Moving along, uh, they also valued education. One of the things that I can boast about, I guess I would say it that way, is that back in the day, we didn't have computers, but they made sure that we had encyclopedias at the house so that we could get our homework out. Uh, that was uh, about the same as having computers in the home now. And, and being a farmer, the only income coming in, things like that, providing us with stuff like that, that uh, lets you know the character of the people that raised us. And uh, when, when we went to college, my first two years, my dad paid for my first two years. And after I realized or found out that I could get a loan, then from that point, I went on and, and uh, got a loan so that some of the others uh, should have come along with the college if they wanted to as well. Uh, the McKissick, Smith, and Gardner were respected people in the community. And uh, the thing that made us as respected as we were was a, due to the, the older people that came before us. Uh, they didn't play. Uh, and, and the community knew that. They were easygoing people, quiet spoken. But if you got uh, under their skin, you knew it, and it wasn't a good thing. So most of the most of us were raised in church, and uh, the, the, you know society understands and knows that you don't bother church people. By the same token, there were some who walked a thin line that did not go to church as often as the others did, and kind of dabbled in other uh, activities. They were respected as well. The young um, people found out that you did not bother them. They didn't bother you, but you didn't bother them. That kind of uh, protection, I should say, that kind of protection protected the children as we were growing up because they knew that you didn't bother the Smith Gardeners and the Kizzicks. Uh, they were people that you just didn't cross. Uh, but and they were by the same token, they were good people to know. They were people that will help you. Uh, one of the things that uh, I still value is where the expo came from. Is that whenever we uh, were farming, whenever one family got through with their crops, the other family went over and helped. So each family helped. All the families helped each other out. Uh, they were all all of us had all of us were products of large families. And uh, being a, being farm families that uh, uh, cut out on the necessity to hire labor. So what we did, we went and kept each other. And so with the family expo, that was one one of the ideas that I came up with at family reunions was to have that so that the different family members would know what type of work that we were all in. So that whenever you go from city to city. Uh, it, it, there may be someone there in the family that could assist you or that you could uh, support uh, in their businesses. So that's where that expo came from. One final thing that uh, we'll talk about would be the Max Smith Corporation. Max Smith came from the, the six uh, Fanny and Ransom Smith's six children representatives from each family came together and formed the Max Smith Corporation. We bought houses uh, and, and just bought properties. And we still have those properties there in Goodwood. Uh, it was something that was very 
interesting, and it was we got along well uh, as, as business members, and uh, it's something that the other uh, family members might want to think about doing in the future is to come together and buy properties. You might end up having some more. Uh, I won't. I won't use this. Donald Trumps. Not, uh, I mean by the enterprises, uh, not by the character. But as we, we go, we thank you for this opportunity.